Hello students, welcome to Mr. Sandwich Reads, and I am Mr. Sandwich. Uh, if you've been following along, we are reading Stargirl, and I am on chapter 4, uh, which is going to start on page 19. At Micah Area High School, Hillary Kimball was famous for three things. Her mouth, the hoax, and Wayne Parr. Her mouth spoke for her itself, most often to complain. The episode that became known as Hillary's Hoax took place in her sophomore year when she tried out for cheerleading. Her face and hair and figure were right enough, and she surely had the mouth. She made the squad easily. And then she stunned everyone by turning it down. She said she just wanted to prove that she could do it. She said she had no intention of yammering and bouncing in front of empty bleachers, which was usually the case. And anyway, she hated sports. As for Wayne Parr, he was her boyfriend. Mouthwise, he was her opposite. He seldom opened his. He didn't have to. All he had to do was appear. That was his job. Appear. By both girls and boys' standards, Wayne Parr was gorgeous. But he was more and less than that. In terms of achievement, Wayne Parr seemed to be nobody. He played on no sports teams, joined no organizations, won no awards, earned no A's. He was elected to nothing, honored for nothing, and yet, though I did not realize this until years later, he was Grand Marshal of our daily parade. He did not wake up in the morning and ask ourselves, we did not wake up in the morning and ask ourselves, what will Wayne Parr wear today, or how will Wayne Parr act today, at least not consciously. But on some level, below awareness, that is exactly what we did. Wayne Parr did not go to football and basketball games, and by and large, neither did we. Wayne Parr did not ask questions in class or get worked up over teachers or pep rallies, and neither did we. Wayne Parr did not much care, neither did we. Did Parr create us, or was he simply a reflection of us? I didn't know. I knew only that if you peeled off one by one all the layers of the student body, you would have found at the core not the spirit of the school, but Wayne Parr. That's why in our sophomore year I had recruited Parr for the hot seat. Kevin was surprised. Why him? Kevin said. What's he ever done? What could I say? That Parr was a worthy subject precisely because he did nothing? Because he was so monumentally good at doing nothing? I had only a vague insight, not the words. I just shrugged. The highlight of that hot seat came when Kevin asked Parr who was his hero, his role model. It was one of Kevin's standard questions. Parr answered, GQ? In the control room, I did a double take. Was the sound working right? GQ? Kevin repeated dumbly. Gentlemen's Quarterly, the magazine? Parr did not look at Kevin. He looked straight at the camera. He nodded smugly. He went on to say he wanted to become a male model. His ultimate ambition was to be on the cover of GQ. And right there, he posed for the camera. He, and suddenly, that disdainful model look down pat. And suddenly, I could see it. The jaw square at the corner as the corner of a cover. I, excuse me. I could see it. The jaw square as the corner of a, of a cover. The chiseled cheeks, the perfect teeth and hair. That, as I say, took place toward the end of our sophomore year. I thought then that Wayne Parr would always reign as our Grand Marshal. How could I have known that he would soon be challenged by a freckled nose homeschooler? And that is chapter four. Uh, keep checking back for videos. I do want to go over characters, uh, character setting, theme, uh, some of those literary elements. So I'm going to drop that pretty soon. Uh, make sure to subscribe if you're a student. And uh, this is Mr. Sandwich Reads. I hope.